never say never again Never, never say never again Okay, let's back up for a moment here. There's a long story that led to the creation of this movie, Never Say Never Again, the third and last unofficial Bond film. As I have mentioned in previous reviews, Fleming always saw Bond as something fit to be filmed and always wanted a series of movies made out of his character. At one point, he teamed up with two other writers, Kevin McClory and Jack Whittingham, and wrote a screen treatment for Bond, an original story called Thunderball. The movie never got made, and Fleming eventually adapted it into a book, which became the ninth book in the series, and technically, the first novelization. Eventually, of course, Eon got their mitts on it and made it into the fourth film in their franchise, so Thunderball was a film based on a book, which was based on a screenplay to a movie that didn't get made. However, the movie led to legal action from McClory, who claimed that He didn't receive proper credit, and that it was him who created the Volanius organization Spectre and its head, Ernst Stavro Blofeld, and that Eon Films, who only owned the rights to Fleming-created material, had no rights to make a film out of Thunderball. The legal wrangling went on over the course of decades, and eventually a settlement was made that McClory and Sony Pictures would have the right to make one of their own Bond films. They originally wanted to do an original story, but this was blocked in court, so they had to settle for remaking Thunderball. The result is Never Say Never Again. The film's title comes from an interview with Sean Connery, who was asked if he would reprise the role of James Bond after Diamonds Are Forever, and he said, Never Again. Well, having a career in the toilet made it easy for him to step back into the role for a large sum of money, and the ironic title is a joke off of that. The film has no connection to the main series, and as such has a completely different cast and feel, and does away with typical Bond staples such as an elaborate opening title and gun barrel sequence. Sean Connery returns as Bond, but this is for laughs, really. The man is quite old and barely in shape at this point. The film attempts to play off this by having him retire at the end, but, you know, it it just didn't work. And at the beginning, he was also inactive due to the new M not using the double O's as much. Using Connery was an obvious attempt to try and draw in old fans, but they already saw Thunderball, so why would they want to see this? The movie should have been called Thunderbull. Kim Basinger plays Domino, so I guess that's something, and Klaus Brondier plays Largo, who is named Maximilian in this rather than Emilio, and instead of having an eye patch, he's just batshit insane. Barbara Carrera plays Fatima Blush, a character so ridiculous that at one point she holds a gun on Bond and tries to force him to write down that she was the best sex he ever had. I'm not kidding, you can't make up shit like this. Unless you're Sony Pictures, I guess. Max von Sydow is also wasted as Blofeld, who appears in two scenes and none of the unique menace or mystery that the character had in Thunderball is present here. Edward Fox plays M, who didn't make too much of an impression on me, and Alec McCohen plays Q. He plays him as kind of a geeky shut-in, a far cry from Desmond Llewellyn's irritable weapons master. The basic plot is the same as Thunderball, but it elaborates and adds to the plot, usually needlessly. At one point, Bond and Largo play each other in this weird video game called Domination. The film is a massive, massive, massive failure. I mean, even the soundtrack is annoying. If people thought Roger Moore was getting too old for the role, well, at least he wasn't doing this. And speaking of which, this film was originally slated to open on the same day as Octopussy, leading to the press calling it The Battle of the Bonds. Sony eventually moved it so that it would open after Octopussy, though the Battle of the Bonds moniker still held. And guess what? Octopussy kind of won. 
It's really no wonder, as this film is only a Bond film in the loosest sense. It covers no new ground, and considering it was the only one they were ever going to make, using Spectre and Blofeld was silly, as Bond and Blofeld never even come face to face in the movie. This one is a curiosity for diehard fans only, as it's more of a comedy than a serious film, and occasionally it is funny, like when a nurse asks Bond to fill up a urine sample and he says, From here? <laughs> well, that being said, if you've never seen a Bond film before, you might enjoy Never Say Never Again, but for the most part, it's to be avoided. I give it a 4 out of a possible 10.